When I first started researching this video, I thought I'm going to have four or five different types of erasers to show you. Turns out I end up with 19 different types of erasers, so this is really going to be an ultimate guide on pencil drawing erasers. There are basically three different types of materials that erasers are made from. So let's start and take a look. What are those three types of materials? And then we'll look at the variations that you get from there. The first erasers appeared in the 1700s and they looked like this. That is made from rubber. So rubber is quite a, a softish, pliable compound. And that turned into a really great way of making erasers. So the idea with an eraser is that the material itself actually absorbs a lot of the graphite itself as opposed to rubbing it off. So the rubber eraser does have a bit of flexibility to it and it's great for just general erasing. From there the formula was fiddled and tweaked with and that gave us the gum eraser. So the gum eraser is even softer than that and when you erase using it, it leaves lots of crumbs on the paper. Then next up, they started using vinyl to make the erasers. So these ones are even more flexible than the, the rubber eraser, but not quite as soft as the gum eraser. Nowadays, 90% of the erasers you're going to get are vinyl erasers. They just seem to have the most versatile consistency for erasing. Another tweak that they did to the rubber erasers was vulcanizing the rubber and adding different things to it. And that gave a lot harder eraser. So you'll probably know these little harder erasers as these little ones that end up on the end of your pencil like this. And I think if you can remember, like this guy and this guy from school days, they were quite hard and you had to be quite careful because they'd easily rip your paper. So what these guys were good for is like colored pencil drawing and also for erasing ink. So it's still pliable, but if you feel it, it's got that bit of roughness to it where these guys are, are smooth to the touch. The next type of eraser you get is called a kneadable or a kneaded eraser. Sometimes the guys even call it a putty eraser. So it looks like this. When you get it, it's a little block. And you get those blocks in different sizes. What's interesting about this is it's literally kneadable. You can shape this into any shape that you want to. And it's slightly sticky to the touch. So it's great for doing little smaller areas or larger areas by flattening that out and just tapping it onto the, onto the paper. And you get them in different sizes and so on, as you can see. So And you also get them in different consistencies. Like this one here is, is, is reasonably hard. I have to put in quite a bit of pressure to, to knead him. But this one here is a lot softer. So what you'd usually want to do with an eraser like this, before you start using it, is just to warm it up. So there's two ways you can do it. Just hold it in your hand like this for a few minutes. Or just knead it. And just pull it until you get a nice consistency. Because that helps it become a little bit more sticky and it picks up more of your of your graphite. And it also makes it easier to to mold. So with use, we'll find what happens is it gets quite dirty because it's now picking up the graphite. The graphite is sticking to this as opposed to being absorbed like your other erasers. So after a while, it ends up looking like this. So all you do to essentially regenerate it is just pull it like this. So then that 
layer of graphite just gets lost, you could say, inside the eraser itself. So this is also another thing that I'll do before I start drawing is I'm going to need my riser and that softens it up, it cleans it, and it makes it much more pliable. There you go, you got yourself uh, essentially a brand new kneaded eraser. And these guys can last you many, many years because of that. So a variation on that is to use something like this. So what this is, it's a poster putty. So you would use this for sticking just posters and, and craft items onto the wall. You can buy this at any stationery store and you get lots of different brands as well. My favorite is now the, the Blue Tech. It does seem to work the best. And as you can see, is it needs just the same way as a kneaded eraser does. But because his job is to stick stuff onto the wall in a, in a repositionable fashion, he's a lot stickier. So you'll find that this guy can lift out more graphite than your standard kneaded eraser does. So I have a ball of Blu-Tac and I have a ball of kneaded eraser. This is for most use, but sometimes when I need to get that, maybe an extra highlight, or lift out something that I've drawn but I'm not happy with, I'll use this guy. And this guy can get you almost back to neat white. Let's maybe take this drawing over here. Look there, can get you almost neat white. And this is probably as dark as you're ever going to get. Next up, we have erasing pencils. So the erasing pencil is literally a pencil, but instead of lead on the inside, you have eraser on the inside. So again, you do get different types, like this one over here is, is nice and soft. You can see how he's bending. Where this one here is a lot harder. Is is much much harder than that one. So depending on how hard you need to erase, you can go for the different type of uh, eraser on the inside. So what I usually do before I buy it in the shop is I will feel the tip to make sure that it's the the correct consistency that I want. And what's nice is they also often come with a little soft brush on the end as well. So as its name implies. To sharpen this guy up, you just use a, a standard sharpener and you, you sharpen him up. Let's get our little drawing back in here again. And he's nice for lifting out little details. Or doing little edges and stuff. The next type of eraser is called a stick or a click eraser. Which looks like this. So as its name implies, it works like a mechanical pencil. So you, you click to, to extend the eraser that you need. And these guys come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. There's a thin one, a thick one. You get ones like this, where you can lock it like that. So it's more of an old school way of doing it. And you also get different shapes. For example, this one here is a, a, a square shape where all these other ones are around. My favorite one of these is the what's called a Tombow Mono Zero. So he's got a nice thin 2.3 millimeters is the thickness of that eraser. So it's perfect for doing little lifting out highlights and details and stuff. For example, little highlights like that. It's perfect for doing that. But Tombo is not the only person that makes it. There are other brands as well. For example, this guy over here. So it's not the brand, it's just the the type of the type of eraser. And those are all vinyl erasers. What's nice is you can also you get the the refills for them. 
So when it's finished, you just top him up. Next up, you get shaped erasers. And they look like this. So what's nice about them is they're really handy and, and good to hold because they, they fit nicely in your, in your hands like this. And the, you get them in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. You get round ones, and this is a triangular one. And you get little bowed ones and so on. Bowed this way, bowed that way. So it's great for if you want to maybe lift out a little piece like this that's at a at a shape where your other erasers aren't going to erase them so nicely. Or you can turn them on his side like this and erase nice long continuous lines and as opposed to this guy over here which you can get a nice sharp edge and as you erase he's, he's going to blunt himself out and that line of yours gets thicker and thicker. This one you can erase all the way along and your line is going to stay the same thickness all the way. So that's what he's handy for. Next up you get electric erasers. So this is basically an eraser over here and when you press the button it rotates really really fast. So they good for just really general erasing or right at the end for lifting out little highlights that you that you need to do because you can even all on really dark areas lift out small erasings like that. What this thing is not good for is erasing large areas because this thing rotates. So if you're working this way and the eraser is rotating that way in the in in the motor, it sort of runs along. And if you're raising this way, you've got to, you know, drag it along. So the only best way of using it is to drag it against the, the angle of rotation. So this one rotates this way. So you're going to erase in this direction like this. So it's nice for just little general erasers. And as you can see, you can get also well all the way back to white paper. Um, it's not good for really long lines like that, unless it's reasonably thick lines. Uh, then it's okay, because you find when you get these guys, they're nice and sharp. The, the refills, they're nice and sharp. But that little edge over there really quickly rounds off. So it's only good for thicker lines like that. Next up, we have black erasers, and it's not the brand name, it's the color of the eraser. <laughs> so what that's good for is when you're drawing on a black or a dark paper, these erasers over here tend to leave a little ghost. Can you see there where these guys don't? So that's what they're good for. The next eraser I want to show you is a combination eraser. So you get them with different types of erasers on each side. This one over here, the Rastoplast, is a standard vinyl eraser on this side. And it's got a ink or a colored pencil eraser on that side over there. So this is a nice soft and this is a lot harder. So that's really handy for the, the colored pencil guys because you can erase gently with this. Or if you need to erase back a lot further, then you can use that side over there. Here's a super interesting eraser. This one is called a dry cleaning pad. Other people also call it a cleaning cushion. Let me show you what he looks like. So it looks like just a bit of muslin cloth like this. Let's get this black piece of paper underneath here. And I'm going to just wiggle this guy. And look what's happening. Can you see you've got like that dust that's falling off over there? So this dust here is little bits of grated eraser. So this whole bag is full of this grated eraser. And what you would use this for is just general cleaning work. It was originally designed for draftsmen. So once they've done their drawing and they 
they've got a little bit of smudges you know as you work you you do now dirty the page or you've got a little bit of graphite dust that's gone around then you could use this because as you clean what happens is this is not really coming into contact with your drawing itself all it is is just these little bits of eraser dust they are rolling around in between the paper and this and they're just absorbing that last little bit of loose graphite that's there so what we'll use it for in drawing is if you've done an area and you just need to adjust the tonal value let's maybe just put some tonal value down over here maybe you've put some tonal value down on the paper and all you want to do now is just adjust that tonal value it's maybe a little bit too dark then you'll just wiggle this guy get some dust down over there and i can take this and just gently rub it over there there's no pressure involved and as you can see you can do small little value changes can you see the difference there and you can now decide how much how far you want to go Let's maybe even give that a little bit of a shading. There you go. So you can see it does have lots of dust. So you do need a nice soft brush to brush away all those little crumbs afterwards. But can you see that? Imagine trying to erase that using a kneaded eraser or a regular eraser. You could never get that in a million years. And it shows it's dirty over here when, once you've used it a bit. But that is not going to smudge on your drawing because you've got that little layer of the crumbs in between this and that. So you're never going to get smudges even though once you've used him a little bit, he is dirty. He appears dirty. So all the ones I've shown you up to now have been just variations on regular erasers. But that's not the only way that you can erase. There are other ways. So let's take a look at some of them now. So let's put some drawing paper down there. And the paper I've put down here is a thicker drawing paper. When you're working on a thicker drawing paper, you can use one of these guys. It's called an erasing knife. So what the erasing knife does is, you can see it's got a little rounded blade on the end over there. A lot of artists do use this to sharpen their pencils, but its main job is if you've done some drawing and you've made a small little mistake or maybe there's just a little bit of a highlight that you need to lift out now you can use this to physically essentially erase the top layer of your paper so you can only use this on thicker paper but sometimes you get maybe a little mark maybe you get ac accidentally a mark on your paper like that so now you can gently come in with this guy just just scrape away that mark off the paper so when you do use one of these just be careful the blades are super sharp the next one is scoring your paper why would you want to score your paper that's when you want to leave something really thin showing through underneath for example whiskers let's maybe just add a few little marks here like this so what i use it's called a dotting tool, but you can use anything. You can use an old ballpoint pen that's uh, empty. You can use a punch, anything with a, a tip on it. So now you've got marks over there, which are scored into the paper. So if you now add some graphite over that, the graphite is not going to get into those score marks. And now it leaves that behind. So you can do that with the pencil with a graphite so yes it's not technically erasing but it gives you the same effect as erasing except this time you can get thinner and finer than what you normally would in the same vein you can use a correction pen so this is my favorite one that i use it's the paper mate correction pen so this is basically just white out Now 
and it's also good for drawing little thin lines. You can do little areas, but nothing too too crazy. I usually leave this kind of stuff just for my final little highlights. Another thing that you can use that's quite popular is called the Jelly Roll Pen. So what I like about the Jelly Roll Pen as opposed to the, the Correction Pen is with a Correction Pen you can't really work over that. It's not, not too effective. With a Jelly Roll Pen you can work over that. You can add an, a, a layer of graphite over that. You'll never get back to black. You'll, it'll always have that little bit of a, a lighter tonal value as opposed to your surrounding paper. Simply because the, the Jelly Roll pen is a smoother layer. So it doesn't, and, and with the paper, your graphite can get in there. Where with this layer of this, it can't. But this guy, it comes in different thicknesses. See, it's a millimeter, comma eight and a half a millimeter. So if you really do need to do some super fine work these guys are just what you need so with these guys i have done use them for highlights on entire drawings like this cat all this hair work over here is done with a jelly roll pen next up is an erasing shield so it's super handy for lifting out little highlights. Let's say, for example, we want to highlight over there. So you'll take your eraser. And there's a perfect highlight. But it's good for all sorts of erasing. Super, super handy. So although it doesn't do the erasing itself, it definitely helps you erase little bits that you couldn't normally. And then lastly, I want to show you a crepe eraser. So he looks very similar to your other erasers. And he feels and is pliable like another eraser. So you're going to, and it's called an crepe eraser. So if you do see this guy in the shop, all the other erasers, don't be tempted to buy it. It's not a normal eraser. <laughs> what this is, and you're going to tell that it's not a standard eraser. If you feel it like this, it's got quite quite a gnarly texture. Let me dirty that up. You can see the texture. Can you see there? It's got a really rough gnarly texture to it. So what this actually is, is the watercolor guys use it to remove their frisket or masking fluid from the paintings afterwards. So they would basically just drag this over here and the the roughness and the, and the stickiness of this would lift up that masking fluid for them. But it's not an eraser in the normal sense. So don't bother buying that one like I did. Alrighty, so I've shown you lots and lots and lots of different ways to erase from your drawing. Each one has its use and each one works perfectly in the right situation. If you want to get some tips on when to use each, I've got a text tutorial that goes with this lesson on my website. I'll leave a link to that below. And if you're just getting started with pencil drawing and you want to know the other equipment that you use for pencil drawing, I'm going to leave a link to that over here for you. Thank you for watching. Now you can go and erase like a boss. <laughs>